YouTubers get sued for one billion. The influencers who promoted FTX are now being sued for okay. over eight billion dollars in damages, and I want to talk about it. FTX. We're not only speaking to a lawyer, but even one of the people getting sued. Meet Kevin, okay, okay. Graham, Stefan, Andre, Jick, Minority Mindset, Brian Jung, Financial Education, Jeremy, Tom Nash, and Bitboy Crypto are all defendants in this lawsuit. But before we oh, get boy. into it, okay. I have to do something I never thought I would do on this channel. I have to defend a certain person on that list. A guy I have been very critical of on this show. I'm talking about BitBoy Crypto. I know, I can't believe it either. What many people don't know is that he turned against them. And get this, months before the collapse, he started warning people about FTX. We're going to be crossing out FTT and Solana. These are going to be going out of the portfolios. September 2022. You're dead to me. Brett Harrison, you are dead to me. FTX, you are dead to me. You are despicable. And I'm disgusted by you in every way, shape, or form. Everybody's going to be on that track. Oh my gosh. He said that way back in September. He said he's disgusted by Sam Bankman Freed. This is BitBoy Crypto, guys. He's the Jim Cramer of crypto, and yet somehow he made one of the greatest blind callouts of all time. And it's so remarkable that I actually want to show you yet another clip That's of him doing this because I simply couldn't believe it when I saw it. They're playing games with people's lives. And that's not right. Time to expose FTX and SBF for what they really are. What can I say? That video is a month before FTX collapsed. And to be clear, I am not claiming that BitBoy is some oracle. I think it was luck. But understand that he's one of the most widely ridiculed crypto influencers. Everyone has dumped on this guy for years for bad calls. But here we are watching him get FTX, the biggest con, more correct than even the most beloved financial influencers. So it just doesn't make sense for him to be in this lawsuit. And besides, you're not supposed to sue BitBoy Crypto anyways. He sues you when you make fun of him. All right, sorry, I'm I'm trying to defend him here, but um, <laughs> I'm not used to this strange turn of events where the villain has become the hero. But either way, with that out of the way, I want to talk about the rest of this lawsuit. Basically, the rest of these influencers are accused of promoting FTX and getting paid for it. It also accuses them of not conducting adequate, if any, due diligence. Allegedly, these influencers played a major role in the FTX disaster who hyped the deceptive FTX platform for undisclosed payments. Now look, none of this is really surprising. We talked about this back in November and it all feels inevitable. The whole reason FTX was so popular is because of the amount of money they dumped into these advertising campaigns. Everyone I know was offered one of these deals. Either way, it's pretty logical to see yeah, to that take that people willing to take the money and sell FTX it just couldn't have hurt as many people. And already we saw a similar class action lawsuit come out against Tom arguably Brady. the biggest promoters, Tom Brady, Larry David, Kevin O'Leary. And so this just seems like the next logical step targeted at smaller promoters, albeit financial education influencers in particular. So although these guys don't have as anything close to Tom Brady's popularity, the argument here is different. It's that people look to people like Graham Stephan and Meet Kevin in a different way than they looked at Tom Brady. If Tom Brady promotes some penny stock, you'll think nothing of it. But Meet Kevin, Graham Stephan, Andre Jick, Financial Jeremy, all they do is do finance all day long. They even have a podcast they call they put Millennial this Money, which was sponsored by, you guessed it, FTX US and is now deleted. And the point is they position themselves as experts and i think that's the real juice of this lawsuit in contrast to say like the tom brady lawsuit the only analogy i can think of is like if someone tried to sell you a pill that was going to help you lose weight and the two people promoting it is jack black and dr oz okay let's say you take the pill and develop uncontrollable vomiting who would you actually be mad at you know you could say well jack black's more of a star but ultimately, obviously, the answer would be Dr. Yeah. Ross because he's expected to know better and to do due diligence. And the reasonable assumption is that Jack yeah, Black yeah, no. look into it, even if he tried because he's not an expert. And so I think that component probably will make a massive difference. I'm certainly not saying everyone who promoted FTX who didn't know anything about finance should be let off the hook. I think it's a huge problem either way. 
that non-experts can shill financial products. I'm just saying it's worse if they are experts. But to make my position even more explicit, I don't think influencers of any kind should be allowed to promote these investment products. I think there's a huge downside to it and very little upside. I think you oftentimes end up hurting people because it's impossible to give broad financial advice in a responsible manner True. to a massive audience you don't know. But on that note, you might say, well, hang on a minute, Stephen. I'm with you on not selling financial products, but uh, they weren't selling that. They were selling FTX, right? Or FTX US. And this is where things get a little tricky because yes, there's some truth to the fact that FTX US was a platform, but on that platform, they were also selling financial products. You see, you could buy what was called a yield bearing account, or you could put your money in it. It's where they offered you 8% a year. And this wasn't just FTX, this was FTX US. And that's a problem because, well, this type of account is probably an unregistered security. To avoid going into too many details, let's just say several different accounts like this have been targeted by the SEC as being unregistered securities, and the FTX earn accounts would be no different. So uh, this is where the lawsuit gets its claim that these influencers may not have just been promoting a scam. They may have been promoting an unregistered security. Now, to be fair to these influencers, these earn accounts are in a strange gray area. According to the website, the FTX app Earn is available only in permitted jurisdictions, which would appear to mean that the United States of America was not allowed to have these accounts. But in typical Sam Bankman Freed fashion, what they said on their website wasn't actually true. You see, these accounts were actually available to U.S. investors, as seen on a screenshot from their own app. Quote, FTX Earn rewards are available for U.S. users on a promotional basis. And admittingly, this was confusing to a lot of people. A Redditor said FTX earn for US customers is incredible, but very poorly marketed. And then complains that it almost feels intentionally hidden, which should have been a red flag. Uh, and maybe it was, mm -hmm. but it was there. And it's like it or not, though. if American investors put money into this earn account, we could earn 8% a year because of one of these influencers, they may have sold an unregistered security, which would be bad, not just for the person who put their money there, but also bad for the influencer. I mean, look, it's it's all bad. It's just legal jujitsu to kind of get to the obvious. Ultimately, this story is about people getting hurt, promoters getting paid, and now they're getting sued for it, to which I say, good. Although not everyone yes, believes sir. this particular legal strategy is going to hold water. I asked Legal Eagle, a well-known lawyer on YouTube, what he thought, and he was doubtful about its chances. And basically the entire case rests on a part of the Florida law that the plaintiff's claim connects the endorsers to FTX. I'm very skeptical of this. The section in question extends liability to any director, officer, partner, or agent uh, for the seller if they personally participated or aided in the making of a sale. And if you're on YouTube uh, or if you're a celebrity endorser, you're not a director of the company, you're not an officer, you're not a partner, and you're not an agent. You're not able to act on behalf of the company. You're just basically contracted to make a statement. For most of them, it relies on a bare allegation that they were, quote, paid to endorse FTX. And then there is a subsequent allegation where, <laughs> so wishy-washy. It says, quote, it is hard to imagine that anyone who has done business with FTX, including paid endorsers, would not have personally witnessed one or more of the deficiencies identified by Mr. Ray. He's the uh, guy who's in charge of the receivership of uh, FTX Mr. bankruptcy. Ray, yeah. uh, and all FTX endorsers have extensive business dealings beyond FTX and surely would be able to identify business practices that are unusually problematic. Now, as a legal matter, I don't think that that really changes anything. As a factual matter, it's just completely false that a celebrity endorser or a YouTuber would have any insight into the inner workings of FTX that the public does not have. That's just not the way it works. Though at the same time, I wouldn't want to be these YouTubers either who are going to have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to their lawyers to defend against what is quite possibly a meritless lawsuit. I don't expect this particular lawsuit to go anywhere, but I think it is going to be a pain in, in the sides of, of many of these YouTubers. Wow. So there's the official opinion from an expert. It'll probably cost the influencers a lot of money, but he's skeptical if it will hold up for the long run. Of course, we'll see how it plays out. But the last thing I wanted to do was not just ask a lawyer what they thought, but 
ask these influencers because look whether you think this particular lawsuit is relevant it changes nothing about the ethics That's of this okay. situation and i wanted to hear it straight from them and most of them refused to comment for understandable oh, reasons okay. but money. all of that money so first uh, uh, my expectation is my profit from ftx just to be as transparent as possible is probably somewhere around 225k it's supposed to be closer to 300 but they never paid me the last payment so i'm probably uh, close scam around on 20 i need to fact check that but we're close to somewhere around that uh and uh ultimately i agree with you i think that there needs to be a, a better there needs to be a lot more diligence in when sponsorships are made uh with creators yeah because you guys are dealing with finances this isn't like this isn't a north VPN okay. ad where things go wrong you know a, something happens this is like if something goes wrong people's entire livelihoods are at stake and for better or for worse you guys are seen as uh the experts and so you guys are held to that expert standard it's like if a doctor recommended a pill that doesn't work and gives you some you know gives you cancer or something suppose it's also relevant to what people individually say right because individually i've always said look crypto is extremely speculative and that it should represent a tiny portion of your portfolio if anything at all on top of that it's also incumbent upon the individual to take some responsibility that we know not your keys not your crypto that's been made abundantly clear even with these bank failures i believe that ultimately depositors deserve some form of a haircut because ultimately they choose now if i say hey go to uh, you know silicon valley bank and get a loan and you're like hey i get a loan here i get all these benefits ultimately you take that risk so it is incumbent upon the individual mm. to take responsibility it, so. as well yes a doctor can refer you hey maybe this medicine will work but the individuals you know? aren't the the experts that's the whole problem is they rely on experts to help them yeah. make this decision they don't have the luxury of spending all day looking at finance and stuff like this so they rely on people to yeah. make their decisions for better or worse and then when things go wrong uh you know okay, ultimately people are going to look to the experts in the room and say hey what happened and if the answer is well, we just didn't do enough due diligence. Sorry, that's that's kind of a problem. So I think that's that's where their questions about like giving back all the money come from. Um, have have you spoken to anybody about just giving back the money uh, to the to the people affected? Once this, once all the cards are settled or all the dust is settled, so to speak, and everybody gets whatever money is left back, uh, whatever deposits are left. I, I'm a big fan of contributing to some sort of recovery fund when it's all over, not because I feel responsible, really? I do not feel responsible, but because I feel sorry for people who, quite frankly, uh, lost money because they either didn't listen to the advice of not your keys, not your crypto, or they put too much of their own portfolio on. You know, if I, if I go onto a gambling website because somebody says, hey, go gamble here, you'll make a lot of money and I lose money, that's I'm on me. Again. And I want to be clear too. I invested in BlockFi thinking this was going to be a great investment. I put $420,000 into BlockFi. Huh. I lost and I every ending. dime of that because the company went bankrupt. Now, did I blame oh, about himself, huh? for making the recommendation or suggesting, hey, you could invest with my fund into uh, BlockFi? Absolutely not, because I'm a big boy and I take personal responsibility. So I want to be very clear, just because I, I suggest that hey you know there should be uh, and, and i'm happy to work with this some form of like basically a charity let's be clear that's what it is it's not taking responsibility because ultimately i don't think uh, anyone any influencer has to take responsibility for what somebody does with product advice that should only that responsibility mm -hmm. should only arise if somebody actually hires somebody like retaining an attorney hiring a doctor for their own personal situation or hiring a personal financial advisor otherwise from there it's a lesson to the whole community we've got to be more careful with sponsors and uh, the viewers have to be you know diligent about the own d their own decisions well there you go guys those are the thoughts of meet kevin and i want to thank him for coming on and maybe one day he'll start that charity he's talking about maybe not but until then I just want you to understand something the next time you're thinking of trusting a financial influencer. Mm -hmm. These promotional deals, how they work with things like FTX is that there's a code associated with the tracks sales. For example, you might've heard of somebody saying, hey, use code 
coffee soda or you know they have some link right so ftx can see how many people signed up with kevin's link or shaq's link and you know who takes responsibility when it's time to make money the influencer they take responsibility for you joining their platform that's how ftx group they paid all these people who wanted to be responsible for bringing you in but you know what happens when things go wrong Suddenly, they're not responsible. Yeah. You did it. It's on you. Isn't that a convenient switch up of who brought you in? At first, it was them. And then you brought yourself in. You got to take responsibility for your own actions. And I just don't think this is really working for people anymore. Yeah. I think it really just benefits the influencers and the financial companies, but hardly anyone else. It's bad for regular people. Skim. And I think there just really needs to be new rules in place about financial experts. Yeah in the modern era. But hey, that's just my opinion. Hashtag not financial advice. This influencers don't want to take any responsibility. Planning individual, investing, selling. This kind of way. I'm pretty good now.